In the previous video, I mentioned I popped a head gasket on the SR. So in this video, I show you how to take the head off and replace it. I'd love to say this is an easy job. Unfortunately, the turbo manifold and all the associated parts on the hot side have to come off in order to pull the cylinder head off. On the intake side, you can actually in leave the intake manifold, but obviously a couple of small items like the intercooler piping and the wiring have to actually be disconnected. So let's get to this. I wanna get this done fast and hopefully easily. Talk about a blown radiator hose. This thing literally ripped in half. On the bright side, I won't be draining any coolant. You may also be wondering, how do I know I popped the head gasket? Well, it's hard to see, but there's a stream of coolant running out between the block and the cylinder head. But let's get down to business here. I started off by removing my TurboSmart external wastegate. Most of you will probably skip this step because I'm one of the very few people that run an external gate on a stock manifold. This step, however, will be a little bit more familiar and that's to pull the heat shields off the manifold and the turbo. There's a water line which connects to the coolant outlet pipe. It's easy and convenient to remove now, so I usually get it out of the way. Same goes for the coolant outlet pipe. Depending on your turbo setup, you may not actually have to remove this, but as you'll soon see, I need all the room I can get. There's a breather hose on the back side of the manifold that I move out of the way so the manifold doesn't get caught up on its way out. Removing the dipstick is optional, but basically the more stuff you get rid of around the turbo area, the easier it's gonna be to extract from the engine bay. Before I jump underneath, I usually unbolt the exhaust manifold from the head. This job is really made easy with some ratcheting wrenches. The downpipe is the first thing to remove. Three simple bolts and it's off. It's hard to see here, but you'll need to loosen the clamp that holds the turbo oil return line onto the block. That way, it slides right off when you start removing the entire assembly. On the front underside of the block, there are two hard lines from the turbo that need to be loosened, one oil and the other coolant. Now the entire turbo manifold and O2 pipe should slide right out, and in most cases it will. However, in my case, the added wastegate dump tube is in the way, so this was a no-go attempt. I actually had to remove the power steering pump, which then gave me just enough room to twist and fiddle the whole setup out. As you can see, it's still really a tight fit. There's always the option of removing the O2 pipe, but it's a pain with the assembly on the car. So I find this is the easier method. All right, hot side, turbo manifold, all that fun stuff is off. That actually didn't take as long as I expected, which is good, but I've still got a lot of work left, so let's get back at it and start disconnecting stuff on the intake manifold side. On the intake side, you'll have to remove the electrical harness, which isn't that bad a job, as all the sensors are easy to access.
The intercooler pipe needs to be removed off the throttle body and so does the cable. There are actually a few vacuum lines that you'll also need to remove from the throttle body and then you can tackle the fuel lines. I usually mark one line, that way I won't reverse them when putting them back on. The ignition coils are next and I pulled the radiator out at this point. It really can be done anytime you please, but it's definitely nice to have out of the way when it comes to pulling the head. Popping off the valve cover can be pretty painless, but some of the washers stick to the rubber grommets and then they tend to fall off when you remove it. So my advice is to not do as I did and remove all the washers before you lift up the valve cover. Spark plugs are the next to go as you'll be able to spin the engine over much easier. And the reason to spin the engine over? Well, that's to set it to top dead center on the crankshaft so that once you remove the head and cams, you'll have everything lined up to go back together with no chance of error. The sprocket marks need to line up with the silver links on the chain, or you can always do as I did and paint mark the links if you're not patient enough to spin the engine until the silver links line up. Either method works just fine as long as the crank is still at top dead center. Next up is the chain tensioner. Don't panic when the camshafts move a bit, that's normal. This view doesn't show it well, but I marked the cam angle sensor before removing it that way, I know exactly how it has to go back in. The camshaft caps need to be removed in a specific order that I'll show you in one second, but also remember to loosen them a few turns at a time so you don't end up putting too much pressure on one side of the cam, which can potentially snap it. Here's a crisscross pattern that you need to follow. Got it? Good. With all the bolts loose, remove the caps. I always try to be a hot shot and remove a few at once so as to not have to remove the oil tubes on their own, but take your time with this as you don't want to drop or damage any bolts or cam cap covers. Remember to keep track of where the cam caps go because they're not interchangeable. You may need to persuade the cams just a tad to unseat them before they slide right out. It helps to have a third hand here to hold on to the chain. The bungee cord holding up the chain is for my own mental well-being. Apparently, you can drop it down and the chain won't slip on the crankshaft, but me being the paranoid type, I simply hold it up with the bungee, which keeps the tension on until I'm ready to remove the head. Get the pipe extensions out for the ratchet because the cylinder head bolts are gonna be tight and require some serious force to crack them loose. Again, there's a proper procedure to loosen the head bolts, so make sure you follow it, otherwise, head warpage could occur. It's almost time to pop the head off here, but there are two small bolts on the exhaust side of the head that you have to remove first. Separating the head from the block usually requires a bit more force than you see here, but I suspect my blown head gasket was the reason why it lifted so easily. There's my timing chain paranoia again. I threw on a few zip ties through the links and then slid a screwdriver in so it would keep it from falling into the front case. I've seen guys muscle the cylinder head off solo mission but I wasn't about to take a chance 
So Dave jumped in and we lifted the head off with ease and underneath was quite the surprise and not in a good way. Well, it's obvious where we had the head gasket failure right on the second cylinder. It actually deformed the head gasket metal lining. So uh, I'm gonna pull this thing off if I can. This thing, trash here, trash here. Even on the fourth cylinder, there was a little bit of seepage it looks like. But the puzzling part is, looks like somebody dropped some metal into the combustion chamber and it, there's some damage on the pistons and I've seen detonation before. It usually doesn't look like this. So I'm gonna ask a couple of friends who are a little bit more knowledgeable about this and figure out whether we've got ourselves an issue with this damage here on the pistons or if it's just something that I've been running with and whatever, maybe the previous head that was on here had damaged them, so who knows? We'll find out. Judging by how badly destroyed the head gasket is, I have a sinking feeling this is gonna be more than just a head gasket replacement. So it doesn't look like I'm just gonna get away with replacing the old factory head gasket with one of these JE Pro Seals. These are actually a really good metal head gasket. If you wanna know more about them, uh, read Dave's article that he wrote on our website, which you can see at www.speed.academy. Anyways, the problem that I have is I just inspected the cylinder head and in the combustion chamber area, there seems to be some detonation that occurred which has burned out a bunch of metal around the valve on number four and number three and some damage on one and two. So it looks like I'm either gonna have to buy a new SR or do an engine swap, which I've always wanted to do a 1J, but man, I'm so close to getting this thing sorted that I might just stick with the SR and continue to develop it. But that's it for now. I'll figure things out. You can comment and let me know what you think I should do. However, from here on out, it's anybody's guess where Project Grip X14 is gonna go. But wait, there's more. I do have an update and unfortunately it's not a good one. The damage on the piston and on the cylinder head was unfortunately caused by the ceramic shielding around the electrode falling off and causing all the chunks and, and damage that happened which unfortunately is a direct result of detonation. So what I suspect happened was the head lifted, which pressurized the coolant system, which caused a spike in temperature, therefore causing the electrode to fall off, damaging the piston and the cylinder head, leaving me with a broken and now paperweight SR block and cylinder head. But on the upside, I'm gonna go buy a new SR, reinforce it with some ARP head studs, get that JE Pro Seal cylinder metal head gasket in there, and we'll be better than ever.